Okay, moving on to the team that I have coming in eighth place for the Big East in the upcoming season. That would be Mike Anderson and his St. John's Red Storm. And it's funny because even though the numbers, when you look at St. John's and their team last season, aren't really going to stand out to you, I do think Mike Anderson did do a pretty good job in his first year Considering the circumstances that was left, uh, that this program was left in by Chris Mullen, he was not a good coach at all, and I understand he brought them to the NCAA tournament, but honestly, he really disappointed during his tenure. He had way too much talent to not win any NCAA tournament games, and uh, they lost in a playing game, so they technically made the tournament, but they lost to Arizona State in the Dayton game, and I do think Mike Anderson, he did a good job in his first year. Now, when you look at St. John's for this year, I'm predicting them to finish in eighth, and I do think they have some talent. The only worry off the bat is that they're going to lose a lot of guys, including LJ Figueroa, Mustafa Heron, and Nick Rutherford. And even though we all know who Mustafa Heron is, last year, he was kind of a non-factor down the stretch after he went down with an injury in February, and he didn't come back which is where St. John's actually really started to turn it on and play their best basketball of the season. Now, LJ Figueroa, who also transferred to Oregon, he was their best player, but at the same time, he wasn't doing things last year that made him so good and made me such a big fan of his two years ago when he was the third option on that team when they made the NCAA tournament with Shamori Pons and Mustafa Heron. And his shot selection last year was just crazy. Now his defense is really going to be missed, but I don't think they're going to lose a ton offensively, especially when you consider sometimes just how poor his shot selection was last year. So that's going to be one thing to watch off the bat. And Nick Rutherford was a glue guy, but they do bring in some guards with the addition of Vince Cole, who was one of the best Juco players in all of college basketball last year. Plus, they return guys like Josh Roberts, Marcellus Erlington, and Greg Williams, who, if you're a St. John's fan, I think those three guys are going to be very important to how good the uh, the St. John's team is and the ability of their squad. Because in their second year under Mike Anderson, um, even though they showed some flash last year they're going to want to show some improvements this year if they want to keep the positive momentum going forward and the other thing about St. John's is this they did have some big wins last year as well they did beat Arizona they did beat West Virginia and I think the goal this year for St. John's when you consider how much they've lost should be to make the NIT and finished in the top seven or eight of the Big East And we know when you look at Mike Anderson's teams historically, how they're going to want to win games. They force turnovers. They never turn the ball over. And my ultimate question for this St. John's team is, if they can force turnovers, how else are they going to win games? Because Mike Anderson, let's face it, when he was hired by St. John's, it was a a hire that even though I think we could all agree, Mike Anderson, his teams have never finished under 500 uh, when he's been a head coach, but at the the same time, he's never really been able to take his teams to the next step. Sure, he was able to lead Arkansas to a bunch of NCAA tournaments in a row, but ultimately, I think Arkansas as a program right now, we could all agree, is in better hands with Eric Musselman than Mike Anderson. And then also, even though we could all agree Mike Anderson is, you know, a fine basketball coach, we were all questioning the fit in New York City. This is a guy with really no connections. And Last year, he really uh, he the games he won was really based on the talent that Chris Mullen brought in. Not really him. I mean, he did bring in Rasheed Dunn, who's been a solid move. But I think as time goes on, we're really going to see how Mike Anderson's recruiting goes at St. John's, and that starts this year as they bring in Posh Alexander, who a lot of people he's a point guard. He could get to the rim. It's going to be interesting to see if he, how quickly this season he's going to be able to get on the floor. The other thing I'm really looking for with this St. John's team is that I want to see guys, and not even the freshmen like Posh Alexander and uh, Dylan Adewusu, that's the other freshman St. John's is bringing in this season. I want to see the guys who it's their second year or third year uh, in the St. John's system really get better. Guys like Rasheem Dunn, guys like Julian Champagny, guys like Marcellus Erlington, guys like Josh Roberts, guys like Greg Williams. I want to see those guys get better and better considering now this is going to be their second year in Mike Anderson's system. And the other thing that I think is going to be a real key for this St. John's team is that they need to play better on the road because last year they only won on another team's floor 
once, which is a big, big problem. And last year, St. John's, they did have some big wins. They beat Creighton in the uh, Big East uh, portion of their schedule. But at the same time, I think this year, when you consider how much they've lost at the top with Figueroa, with um, guys like uh, Heron and Rutherford, their goal for the season should be to make the NIT, especially when you, you consider how tough the Big East is going to be this year. But at the same time, I do see a scenario where St. John's does exceed expectations. I think if Vince Cole is all what he thinks he could be, him and Rasheem Dunn could be a pretty dynamic backcourt. I also really like the flashes that Erlington and Champagny were able to show towards the back end of last season. I remember St. John's before the pandemic happened, obviously. Not only did they play the final college basketball game of last season against Creighton but before that they played Georgetown in the Big East tournament and if you remember in that game Georgetown was winning basically the whole way and all of a sudden St. John's went on like a crazy run they were it was like a 23 to 3 run I just remember Marcellus Erlington hitting three after three after three and I remember since I watched that game I was like all right I'm really looking forward to see what exactly this kid could do next season but once again for St. John's they have to play better on the road because because last year, they were only to win on another team's floor once, and that was at DePaul. And we know, uh, we haven't gotten to them yet, but uh, DePaul, historically, has not been a very successful basketball program over the last 20 years. But going back to St. John, offense is really going to determine how successful this team is this season. And I feel like step one is that they need to shoot the ball better. St. John's was just... 32% as a team from three last season. And keep in mind, their two best shooters, Figueroa and Heron, are not coming back. Vince Cole, the Juco transfer, should be the main contributor in terms of three-point shooting. And uh, if he contributes, okay, that will be good. But if he can't shoot the ball... St. John's could be in trouble, and that's one of my main worries for the St. John's team, especially when you consider the style of how they're going to want to play, you know, physical, uh, you know, turnover basketball. That's how they want to win. So if they could shoot the ball, great. But if not, I think they could be in trouble. Greg Williams is a player I want to talk about a little bit. I think if anyone could break out, he is possibly one of them. I understand he could be more of like a glue guy. And for me, a Greg Williams breakout is just like a couple – when you look at his points per game, improve it by a couple points. I think he could be a real difference maker. He does a lot of different things on the floor. When you look at his numbers last year, he averaged 5.7 points per game, three rebounds per game, two assists per game, uh, two block, uh, one, one and a half steals per game, and about half a block per game. I think those numbers are really going to improve this season, especially when you consider that he's going to get more and more playing time. And also David Carraher. This is a guy that last year really was not good. He was a transfer from Houston Baptist, only averaged 4.3 points per game, two rebounds per game, one assist per game. I think he's going to be able to play a little bit as well when you consider his size. Uh, and I think they're going to need him to be better. If he can be, that would be a real difference for this uh, St. John's team. And then Rasheen Dunn, I want to talk about him. He was one of the uh, bigger surprises for me in college basketball last season. He really took the Bulls by the horn in terms of St. John's starting point guard role, and he's good at point guard. He's steady, and last year, he really didn't turn the ball over at all, and when you look at Posh Alexander, this is a guy that got hurt during his senior year, and I think he's going to be a very good college basketball player, so those two guys leading your backcourt, uh, hopefully by March, Posh gets better and better. That's a really good sign for this St. John's team going forward, and also Julian Champagny. This is a sophomore wing, and I think he's probably the real player to watch on this St. John's team. He was a member of the Big East all-freshman team last season, and he does everything on the court. Rebounding, scoring, block shots, plays multiple positions, and his size makes him very hard to guard on the perimeter because he can make threes, and he's strong enough to bang in the posts and guard Big East forwards. And I think when you look at Champagny, his role is really going to expand when Figueroa and Heron gone, because I'm telling you this, I think for St. John's, it may be a blessing in disguise if Figueroa and Heron are gone, especially when you look at the way they played last season without them. And I think if anyone on the St. John's team is really going to benefit from that, it could be Champagny. And also Marcellus Erlington. This is an undersized foreman who really did take a major leap in his sophomore season last year, 
especially when you consider the fact it was impressive because Chris Mullen really refused to play him at all. He really couldn't uh, find the floor when Chris Mullen was the head coach, but all of a sudden, sometimes you need is a coaching change, and Erlington was able to play very well uh, under Mike Anderson's watch last year. He ranked in the top 10 in the Big East in offensive rebound, in offensive rebounding percentage and is a very good uh, defensive asset. Also, Josh Roberts. Right now, I'm projecting him to be the starting five-man. He's 6'9". He's really good on the glass and ranked 33rd in the country in block rate last year. If St. John still had LJ Figueroa, I think we'd be talking about like a top 50, top 40 team. I think I'd have them like third or fourth in the Big East, kind of in the same place where UConn is right now. Um, but at the same time, I do think Mike Anderson with this team is going to have his guys competing every night, but the Johnnies are going to need to shoot the ball really well in order to make the NCAA tournament. I'm going to be very curious to see what or if St. John's misses about last year's squad. Are they going to miss LJ Figueroa? Are they going to miss uh, Mustafa Heron? Or are guys like Champagny and Erlington, those two guys especially, are those guys going to be able to take a big jump going forward? Right now, I'm projecting St. John's starting five to be done at the one, Vince Cole at the two, Champagny at the three, Erlington at the four, Roberts at the five, with Williams, Carraher, and Posh coming off the bench to start off. And I think if I'm a St. John's fan, there are some reasons for optimism on this team. I do think already Mike Anderson has your program in a better spot than Chris Mullen ever did. But as the season goes on, you're just hoping this St. John's team could get better and better.